Good day everyone! Welcome to another important lesson in health. Today's lesson, diseases and disorders caused by poor environmental sanitation. Sanitation is a cornerstone of public health. Sanitation can be defined as the hygienic means of promoting health through prevention of human contact with the hazards of waste as well as the treatment and proper disposal of sewage or waste water. Now let's talk respiratory diseases. Respiratory diseases are sometimes referred to as lung diseases because they primarily affect the lungs, the organs that allow us to breathe. Breathing problems caused by respiratory diseases may prevent the body from getting enough oxygen. Indoor and outdoor air quality are two of the main environmental factors. Examples of respiratory diseases are Number one is asthma. Asthma is a chronic disease of the airways in the lungs called bronchial tubes. Bronchial tubes carry air into and out of the lungs. In people with asthma, the walls of this airway become oversensitive. The airways overreact to things like smoke, air pollution, mold, and many chemical sprays. They also can be irritated by allergens like pollen and dust mites and by respiratory infections like a cold. When the airways overreact, they get narrower. This limits the flow of air into and out of the lungs and causes trouble breathing. Asthma symptoms include wheezing, coughing, and tightness in the chest. Next one is bronchitis and emphysema. These two are examples of chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases or COPD. Both conditions often occur together. These diseases limit air flow into and out of the lungs and make breathing difficult. COPD usually gets worse with time. A person with COPD has ongoing inflammation of the bronchial tubes. This irritation causes the growth of cells that make mucus. The extra mucus leads to a lot of coughing. Next is influenza. Influenza or flu is a respiratory infection that is caused by a virus that can damage the lungs. Usually, people recover well from the flu, but it can be dangerous and even deadly for some people. Those at greater risk include older people, young children, pregnant women, and people with certain health conditions like asthma. Number four is pneumonia. Pneumonia is a severe inflammation of the lungs that can be caused by bacteria, viruses, and fungi. Fluid builds up in the lungs and may lower the amount of oxygen that the blood can get from air that is breathed in. People most at risk are older than 65 or younger than 2 or already have health problems. Next is pulmonary hypertension. This is high blood pressure in the arteries that bring blood to the lungs. It can affect blood flow in the lungs and can reduce oxygen flow in the blood. And lastly, lung cancer. Lung cancer is a disease in which abnormal lung cells multiply and grow without control. These cancerous cells can invade nearby tissues, spread to other parts of the body or both. Now let's proceed to skin diseases. The skin is a complex active body organ. 
It is the largest organ of our body. It protects us from bacteria and viruses and regulates our body temperature. If any of the skin's function fail, there can be serious consequences. Skin diseases and disorders caused by poor environmental sanitation include the following. Number one is acne. Acne starts when greasy secretions of the skin sebaceous glands plug the tiny opening for the hair follicles. Acne commonly starts during puberty between the ages of 10 and 13 and tends to be worse in people with oily skin. Teenage acne usually lasts for 5 to 10 years, normally going away during the early 20s. Next one is eczema. Eczema is a term for a group of medical skin conditions that cause the skin to become irritated. Eczema is almost always itchy. Sometimes the itching will start before the rust appears, but when it does, the rust most commonly appears on the face, back of the knees, wrist, hands, or feet. It may also affect other areas as well. Number three, psoriasis. Psoriasis, it is a common skin disorder that forms thick, red, bumpy patches covered with silver scales. Psoriasis, they can pop up and wear, but most appear on the scalp, elbows, knees, and lower back. Psoriasis usually appears in early adulthood. For most people, it affects just a few areas. In severe cases, it can cover large parts of the body. The rashes can heal and then come back throughout a person's life. Number four is athlete's foot. It's a fungal infection of the foot. It causes peeling, redness, itching, burning, and sometimes blister. Athlete foot is a very common infection. The fungus grows best in a warm, moist environment such as shoes, socks, swimming pools, locker rooms, and the floors of public showers. Next is chicken pox. Chicken pox is a highly contagious childhood infection caused by the Varicella suster virus. The condition causes a very itchy, blistery rash and usually a fever. The chicken pox virus spreads through the air such as when an infected person sneezes or coughs by the direct contact. Chicken pox once was very common but the number of those infected has significantly dropped since the development of a vaccine to prevent the infection. And lastly, skin cancer. Skin cancer, it is the abnormal growth of skin cells the most often develops on skin exposed to the sun. But this common form of cancer can also occur on areas of your skin not ordinarily exposed to sunlight. Activity time! Define the following. 1. Asthma. Number 2. Influenza. Number 3. Pneumonia. Number 4. Eczema. Number 5 psoriasis and last but not the least chicken pox write your answer in mape notebook and for your performance task draw example of healthy environment and poor environment and that's all for today i hope you learned something in my lesson thank you for your active participation 
If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. Hanggang sa muli!